Switzerland won, Germany won, the Swiss almost, almost, almost get a famous, famous win to Germany, the hosts, um, who managed to get a goal back in the 92nd minute, thanks to Falkirk, who scored his second goal of the Euros. Before we start, guys, the revolution shall be televised. If you are a fellow Kenyan, you need to know that your voice needs to be heard. So yeah, do what you will and do what you can. Um, yeah, so Switzerland won, Germany won. I feel like so it's a bit of a weird game. Like Germany take the lead through Andrich and then they go to VAR and I guess it was a good call. I, I can't say it was not a good call. I mean, if you, you can give it either way. Let's just say that. You can give it either way. It's one of those things where it's it it's... It's a it's not a good call. It's a bad call. No, it's a good call the way you give it. <laughs> you know, it, if you give a no foul, that's fine. If you give a foul, it's okay. Like it it was that that close. Um, but if it's a foul, it's a foul. <laughs> you know, according to the ref. So it's again, it's subjective. It depends on the referee. Anyway, Andrich scores from outside the box. That was his his. It was supposed to be his first goal ever for their team. Um, but yeah, it was ruled out after. The ref on VAR and a, a foul was called on Musiala in the build-up of of play. Um, Jan Sommer was quite lucky because that was quite an embarrassing goal to concede from that far, and then you basically have it in the palm of your hands, and then you just fumble it in. Yeah, Sommer is is one one lucky man. Um, one thing I realized about this German team is that first of all they started with the same team that started the other games, which was a bit of a surprise because I thought he'd do a bit of rotation. But to be fair to him, nothing was really um, to be fair to Nagelsmann, the coach, nothing was ever assured because if they lose this game, yeah, which they were close to, if they lose this game, Switzerland goes to the top of the group. And that that would have meant they now fall to... Where would they fall to? They would fall to the second part of... Um, yeah, they would be in the in the other side of the bracket. So they would have had to play the second place team in Group B, right? Whereas now they're playing the... These things are confusing. So second Group C, sorry, C, 2C. So second in Group C, which is a much, much better... Let's look at Group C. So if you look at Group C... Group C, we have England, Denmark, Slovenia, and Serbia. So the second player from that group is much better than playing the second in Group B, which has Spain, Italy, Albania, and Croatia. So this was a crucial, crucial win for them, a uh, crucial, crucial draw for them. Um, and now I get where Nagelsmann actually wanted. He wanted to, what he said is that he wanted to get into the knockout stages with momentum. But um, yeah, this entire tournament, one thing I've said about Germany, my, my, if I was to, not really a weakness, but if I was to pick on someone that a team would attack, as a, as a, let's say I was another coach, right? And I'm saying, okay, I'm game planning for Germany. My one person that I'd be targeting is Jonathan Tarr. Just, I'm, I'm not saying he's a weak player. He's not really a weakness, but he's not of the same level as the rest of the players in their positions, right? Like Tony Cruz, one of the best in his positions. Uh, Gundogan, one of the best in his positions. Um, Kai Havertz, for what he does for Germany, the best in his position. Um, and when I say the best in his position, I mean the best in his position in the team. Whereas Jonathan Tarr, there's yeah, he's athletic, he's big, but he just finds himself in some very weird positions. Um, he's, again, he's a right-footed center back playing on as as a, 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 as a left center back. So the moments where he's he gets caught, he's always trying to bring the ball back to his right foot. So if you're doing a high press, I will always press towards his his right side, make him force him to go to use his left foot. And if he doesn't use his left foot, he will try and bring it to the right and he's in trouble. Um, Germany, uh, uh, sorry, um, Hungary did that very well with, uh, Scotland did that very well against Hungary with Kekes because Kekes is right-footed, playing was playing on the left and they kept on pushing him towards his right foot. And a few times, McGinn was causing him problems. And yeah, that is where I would really, really target. Um... 28 minutes, Ndoye scored a goal for Switzerland. Really good goal. Great movement in the box. Uh, Rida Cross. They were a bit lucky coming in. Rida Cross and uh, Ndoye just goes, just gets in front of Ta to get the goal. Um, really can't fault Ta in this one. Like, Ndoye was just really, really smart with his movement. 
Switzerland have started the last three games, the first three games of the Euros, which is the last three games, with three different strikers. They started with Shakiri in the second game. In this game, they started with Mbolo. And the first game, they started with uh, Dua, the Ghanaian, Swiss Ghanaian boy. <laughs> what this shows me is that it doesn't matter who starts up front for them. Obviously, you want some some stability and some consistency in selection. But what this tells me is that they know their strength is the five guys behind the striker. So that is Ebisha, that is Ndoi, that is Xhaka, and um, who's the other guy I'm forgetting? Um, if I can get it. Froila. So Froila, Ebisha, Rida, Ndoi. Froila, sorry, Jaka, Froila, Ebisha, Ridla, Rida, Ndoi. That five, he has complete faith in that five. And he's like, this is my strength. The movement between these players, again, I really insist of movement. There's only a few teams that I've seen whose movement up front has been insane. Switzerland is definitely one of them. Spain is another. Um, there's one more I'm forgetting. It's one of the, what is, the Slovenia. I think it's Slovenia. And with their right back, the right back gets up so high. So they, the strength is in that five, right? So whoever starts in the second round, it doesn't matter. And one good thing this has done is that now no one knows who's going to start up front, especially with the three of them, yeah? So they're giving it their all knowing any of us could start. But it could come to bite them because, yeah, you didn't really have some consistent selection. But I think it's very clear when you're playing up front, there are certain things that they need from you, right? There is, you just need to have great hold-up play, maintain your position in the middle that way the movement around can be around you but not necessarily with you you know um so in as much as you have great movement amongst the five there's a point there's a focal point and whoever comes up front keeps doing that and so far it's worked wonders so yeah Ndoye scores one nil at this point switzerland go to the top of group a um a few minutes later Ndoye almost gets a second goal his shot just goes wide um noya i would say he had it covered but it was very very close um then in the second half, we had a Ram shot, we had Cruz shot, we had a Kai header. All of them were either going wide or getting saved. The person who came closest was Kimmich, who had a great chance. Uh, Florian Vats created a great chance for him. And then Kimmich gets the ball in the D, tries to sort his feet out. By the time he gets a shot off, it's blocked. Um, and that was the closest they came. Then um, in the 83rd minute, Vargas gets a goal, another goal for the Swiss. Um, but... The assistant referee calls it offside, raises the flag. And when they go to the, to the automated offside system, they confirm that he was actually offside. Um, a very, very good call from the referee. Like the way he saw that, I don't know how he saw that, but it was the right call. Sorry, guys, a bit of a cold. A rough night last night. Um, then, yeah, it's called offside. Then obviously it's still 1-0. Um, um, and this time you could see Switzerland were gaining in confidence. So just like really, really growing into the game. And then 88 minutes... Uh, Vargas was attacking on the wing. Again, now they were hitting Germany on the counter. He just manages to lay it off for Xhaka, who I've seen this so many times, that left-footed shot trying to go to the bottom corner. Uh, this time, Neuer was awake, and he just, well, he wasn't asleep before, but he was awake and alert to it and saved it. Um, and Switzerland were really knocking on the door until Niklas Fulkrug comes on. Another goal. Another late goal by a substitute. We have so many of these in the tournament. Fulcru gets his second goal of the tournament. He's now <laughs> top scorer. If you take away Lukaku's VR goals, and if you take away own goals, um, Fulcru header into the corner. Keeper doesn't even move to make it 1-1. And the game ends like that, and Germany get top spot in Group A. And as I said earlier, they are now quite uh, in a good position. At least now they will face someone from Group C and not someone from Group B. Switzerland will have to face a big dog coming out of Group uh, B. So, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating few days as we figure out who's playing who. And, yeah, that is how Group A ends. Switzerland won, Germany won. <laughs>